guys, welcome back to another one. If you're new to this channel, I am Bull Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we're in the brand new 2024 Nissan Murano, courtesy of Younger Nissan in Frederick, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So this is Nissan's luxurious two-row SUV. And this may be the final year from the Murano before a complete redesign as well. And the base S trim level is gone for this year. I'm just gonna get that out of the way. But ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several trim levels for the 2024 Murano. First one being the SV, starting at $37,920. Midnight edition for $39,510. got the SL, which is the one we are in today, starting at $41,880. And lastly, the Platinum, going for $45,930. And so that was all pricing for the front wheel drive setup. If you wanted to add all wheel drive, you can do that. Simply add $1,700 then to any of those prices. But regardless of trim level that you go with, the power plant on the Murano is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a 3 5 liter naturally aspirated reliable v6 putting out 260 horsepower at 6,000 rpm 240 pound feet of torque coming in at 4400 rpm that power being sent to the front wheels or all wheels through a cvt 0 to 60 time coming in at approximately 8.2 seconds with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 28 on the highway taking regular unleaded fuel and so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the murano here to the test and Let's see how quickly we can get our new 2024 Murano here up to speed. All right, here is our straightaway in three, two, one, go. Instant, love it. All right, still not the quickest thing in the world. Gotta be honest, zero to 16, 8.2. It's respectable, but it's not quick, but one thing I did like, like I mentioned there, it is an instant acceleration, not like an electric car instant acceleration, but not like a turbocharged engine acceleration. I'll say that because with turbocharged engines, typically you got a little bit of turbo lag. The alternative, which Nissan could probably use in this thing is their turbocharged three cylinder that they use in the Rogue, but that does have a little bit of turbo lag, but with a naturally aspirated V6, you do have instant acceleration when you hit the gas. So I personally love that. Not only that with naturally aspirated engines, of course they are more reliable than their turbocharged counterparts as well. So for that reason, I think the engine is perfect on the Murano. But anyways, then touching on braking, because that is equally important, of course. Up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.1 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, as we pull up to a red light here, that comes in at 120 feet. As far as the braking feel goes, it is a smidge bit on the softer side of things, but I will say 120 feet, that number, is perfectly fine that's plenty respectable typically with suvs you get upper 120s if not 130 so 60 to 0 and 120 feet that's great i'm just not perfectly in love with the braking feel it's just okay i'll just put it that way but anyways then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars as far as ride quality goes that has been perfectly fine in my short little test drive here today so far i will say ride quality has been absorbing frederick's road imperfections perfectly fine and they have a lot of road imperfections here in frederick so i don't have any issues with that steering feel i also really like because that is weighted on the heavier side of things so it better points you in the direction that you want to go as opposed to a much looser steering feel that you actually traditionally do find in suv so this is more like a sedan steering feel which is i think why i personally like it it feels good in this thing cabin noise there is a little bit of cabin noise when you get higher up in the uh speeds especially the wind noise coming into the cabin road noise isn't bad but you do get a little bit of wind noise coming into the cabin as you get higher up in the miles per hour i guess you could say that touching on visibility i actually can see it perfectly fine out of my rear view mirror so personally i definitely don't have any issues with that but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 nissan murano all right so here she is you guys the new 2024 nissan murano finished in scarlet ember 
in case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we have on this one. And yes, this is an optional paint option. I believe it goes for $395 or somewhere in that ballpark, but that's what you're looking at. But as always, let's go ahead and start with where the Murano is made. Take a look at the VIN. First character is the number five, indicating that the Nissan Murano is built and assembled here in the US. So let's go ahead and start up front on this one. LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. Gotta love that. Automatic feature coming standard with that as well, along with automatic high beams for all trim levels. So if you have your high beams on at night, since it's a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when that vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. Just below, LED fog lights do also come standard on every single trim level of the Murano now. Didn't used to be that way last year because the S trim level existed last year that did not get them. But with the SV trim level being the base trim level for 2024, now all trim levels do get the LED fog lights down below there. And of course, front and center, you will either find a chrome or a black V-Motion front grille, depending upon the trim level that you go with. So for the SL, you're gonna get that chrome. For the Midnight Edition, obviously you're gonna get a black just for an example. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the front end. I still don't mind it. I still think it looks good up front, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we go around to the side of the Murano, black or silver roof rails do come standard up top you also find black or chrome window surrounds coming standard and all that once again depended upon the trim level that you go with you will find that floating roof line on the c pillar back there differentiating the roof from the rest of the body of course little styling cue rear privacy glass is going to come standard for all trim levels across the board and take a look at the side mirrors body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard they will be heated with led integrated turn signals then as well gotta love that and then of course found on the side skirts down below you're either going to get some chrome or black accents again we have the chrome which i think looks pretty darn good it goes well with the chrome window surrounds and the chrome door handles as well but then take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch machine finished alloys for the sv trim level 20 inch alloys though for all other trim levels varying in design including the satin black wheels which actually do not come standard on any trim level they are optional they go for 1730 dollars and we do have that option quite honestly I think they look pretty darn good on this thing. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the Murano. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the Murano here, taking a look all the way to the top, body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, you're gonna find a gloss black rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, of course. You also have that rear window wiper as expected back there, but LED tail lights do come standard for every single trim level across the board. That isn't always the case, so I do like to emphasize that. You will also get some like the video and subscribe lettering found on the back tailgate there. So I'm just kidding, of course, but I have been doing this for around nine years now reviewing new cars so if you do like new car reviews go ahead and hit the subscribe button I would greatly appreciate it and like the video as well it does definitely help the reach of this particular video out so I do appreciate that as well but then making our way all the way to the bottom here you will find dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips they look pretty darn good down there but anyways I do believe you guys know now what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since we are around to the back of the Murano, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a hands-free power tailgate for the SL and Platinum trim levels only. So you essentially could kick your foot underneath of the rear bumper there. It is going to automatically open up for you if your hands are full. But there is a button on the key fob. There's a button on the lift gate itself. And there's a button by the driver's side left knee then to open it as well but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 31.1 cubic feet if that was not enough space there's a 60 40 split meaning the rear seats do fold down bumping that up to 65 cubic feet then there is also some there are some levers in the cargo area i should say that does allow you to fold down those rear seats very easily so i did like the convenience of that there is some cargo lighting back there of course there are grocery bag hooks plenty of them i like seeing that cargo tie down acres do come standard there's a 12 volt power outlet back there it's actually a cargo cover back there 
there as well. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire, which I personally prefer as opposed to the fix a flat. And there's actually some space around that spare tire. You could probably put an ice scraper or something like that if you wanted to as well. But then making our way up to the rear legroom, that comes in at 38.7 inches for reference. I mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Rear passengers though, definitely have it made in the Murano. Here is why you get rear ventilation coming standard. I like that of course, but rear center armrest with cup holders and not only the cup holders, but there's also a little slot kind of to set a tablet or a cell phone if you wanted to as well. There's dual rear USB charging ports. I also liked seeing that. Uh, heated rear seats though, coming standard on the SL and platinum trim level. So our SL has that today. So it does get cold here in Western Maryland. So that is definitely gonna keep your rear passengers quite warm. So I liked that. The only thing I believe is missing for the rear passengers is some rear window sunshades. Nissan, maybe when the redesign comes out, at least add an option for the rear window sunshades or put it on the very top trim level or something like that because you don't know how often they do actually come in handy. I'm just saying. Let's say then making our way up to the front seats, 10-way power adjustable front seat with power lumbar does come standard. Four-way power adjustable passenger seat also coming standard, gotta love that. Heated front seats also coming standard yet again, I love that. Memory settings for the SL and platinum trim levels and that's for up to two different drivers there. And then ventilated front seats are going to come on the platinum trim level only. So overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was great with the power adjustable seats the power lumbar was plenty adjustable as well and the steering wheel telescoped out very far as well so for a six foot adult like myself it was super easy to find my perfect driving position in this thing and speaking of the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is leather wrapped for all trim levels as well and if you wanted a heated steering wheel yet again go with the sl or platinum trim levels 10 and 2 grips a little bit on the thicker side and i absolutely love the feel of the steering wheel in this thing but so then make your way up to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your nissan logo all the way to the top lock unlock the button to pop the rear tailgate and then the circular button that is your remote start which does come standard on all trim levels of the murano i love that but ultimately it is all keyless entry with a push button start so all i'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located directly in front of the shifter and so once started up, tachometer is all the way to your left, speedometer is on your right. There is a fairly large digital display front and center. To control what is on that digital display, there are some steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel, allowing you to toggle between different things like radio information. There's your outside temperature. There is a digital speedometer and compass if you wanted to leave that up there. There's also how many miles you have left until you hit empty. There's your trip A, trip B, of course, average fuel economy, the list goes on. So pretty much everything you could possibly think of up on the digital portion of the gauges. Having said that, wouldn't have minded seeing a full digital gauge cluster on the Murano, much like the Rogue now does that. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Dual pane panoramic moonroof. That is new for 2024 for the SL trim level. So there hasn't been many changes for the 2024 Murano, but that is one of them. Previously, the SL did not get the panoramic moonroof, but for 2024, it does. And of course, the platinum trim level does get that as well. Over head sunglass holder does come standard across the board ambient led lighting for the sl and platinum trim levels auto dimming rear view mirror for all trim levels across the board gotta love that then if you were to go with the sl and platinum trim levels you will find home light controls to up to three different garage doors found on the bottom portion of that rear view mirror so that's definitely convenient dual zone climate control is going to come standard on all trim levels across the board and overall I think Nissan actually did a really good job with the interior quality, believe it or not. A lot of soft touch materials found on the doors specifically. I do like kind of this aluminum look, although that is plastic, but it looks good on the doors and that continues up above the passenger side glove box and all that. So that looks pretty cool. Another thing I always gripe on on a lot of my reviews is surrounding the shifter and cup holders. A lot of times manufacturers will leave that as like a matte gray or a matte black plastic. Nissan didn't do that. They continued that aluminum look finish and they put that around that area as well, which I personally think looks absolutely amazing. Just to the right of the shifter, you're gonna find a little bit of storage. You got your dual cup holders, your heated seat buttons, of course. Within the center armrest, there is a very deep amount of storage in there, a ton of storage, quite honestly. And overall, the softness to the elbow rest when I was actually driving, found on top of that center storage there and also on the doors, it was extremely comfortable. So overall, I think Nissan did a pretty darn good job with the interior quality of this thing. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to the tech. And let me start with my very favorite part on the tech, just above the infotainment screen, you will find a CD player that comes standard on all trim levels across the board. 
I always like to mention that with the Murano because you really don't see that that often anymore. But if you like CDs, the Murano is one of the few vehicles that still has it. But 8 inch colored touchscreen display does come standard. Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. Factory navigation system is going to come on the SL and Platinum trim levels. You will find some weather information up there. There's your stock information, but no crypto information, unfortunately, quite yet. You will also find some radio information up there. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. Six speakers is going to come with the SV and the Midnight Edition. And then you're going to find an 11 speaker Bose sound system for the SL and Platinum. So therefore, that is the one that we have today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Been a while since I listened to Bangarang, but yeah, that was plenty of bass. And I always say this with Nissan sound systems, their bass is always absolutely incredible. It doesn't matter if it's the Bose or not the Bose, the bass is still pretty darn good. So plenty of bass with that one. Clarity is plenty fine as well. And the thing with Bose sound systems is I had what I had a Bose sound system in my old Infiniti G35 coupe. It never failed me. I took that car for quite a while. And uh, yeah, Bose is a very reputable company, so you're not gonna have any issues with that. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Murano in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But if you were to go with the SL or platinum trim levels yet again, you will also get that panoramic view monitor found on the right there, giving you that bird's eye view, which is always is going to lead us into safety. Let me start with my favorite part, IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which pretty much says it all right there. That is the very highest designation given by IIHS. So you gotta love that. But front side side current airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors, tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard forward collision warning, autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian detection, intelligent lane intervention, a blind spot warning system with rear cross traffic alert, driver intention monitoring system, and believe it or not, front and rear parking sensors as well that is that is remarkable you almost never see that coming standard on suvs out there even luxury suvs actually so that's pretty darn cool then if you were to go with the sl or platinum you're also going to get traffic sign recognition then as well and so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the murano i think the steering feel is great i absolutely love it it's a much heavier feel to the steering as you traditionally find in suvs it's not anything crazy like a tesla model y or something like that but it is a little bit heavier than I'm used to, so I do like that. Excellent safety as well. You can't beat an IHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Excellent reliability, according to Consumer Reports. That's a pretty good factor in determining what vehicle you want next for a lot of people. So go ahead and pick up a Consumer Reports magazine that's going to vouch for that for you. Nice interior quality as well, as I said in the video. I also like the CD player. That's something you don't traditionally find on just about every other vehicle out there right now. As far as room for improvement goes, digital gauges would be nice. I knew Nissan can do it. They do it on a lot of their other vehicles. And rear window sunshades is almost a must, at least as an option on SUVs out there these days, because a lot of people, they'll go to fast food and they'll uh, they'll park in a parking lot and eat it with their kids in the back. And uh, there's always one kid that has that sun blaring in his eyes or her eyes, whatever. And it's annoying. And it would be nice to have rear window sunshades. And also if you're driving home a newborn from the hospital, again, it's kind of uh, one of those things you would like to have. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the Murano. Let me know if you're buying one now or if you're waiting for the redesign. But that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.